Greetings. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about what is georeferencing and also how to georeference an image in ArcMap or ArcGIS and then how to serve up or publish that georeferenced image inside ArcGIS Online. Let's get started. Now a geographic information system or GIS is powered by location, correct? So all the data that we want to put in a GIS, we want to have it attached to real world coordinates, whether that data is on the Earth's surface, above the Earth's surface, or below the Earth's surface, for example, geologic layers. So it's important to attach location to every data layer and every object that we want to map, study, and analyze. So georeferencing is all about attaching real world coordinates to data that's that has no coordinate system attached to it. Now why wouldn't it have coordinate system attached to it? Because it's it's taken with a camera, for example, that has no georeferencing information on it, no GPS information, or it's a scanned map or an aerial photo or a historical document that you want to georeference, you want to attach real world coordinates to. Now raster data, grid data, pixel related data is commonly obtained by scanning maps or collecting aerial photographs and satellite images. Scan map data sets don't normally contain spatial reference information either embedded in the file itself or attached as a separate file. With aerial photographs and satellite imagery sometimes the location information delivered with them is inadequate and the data does not align properly with other data that you have. So, to use some raster data sets in conjunction with your other spatial information, again, you want to combine these things to make wise decisions, you may need to align or georeference that data to an established map coordinate system. A map coordinate system is defined using a map projection, a method by which the curved surface of the Earth is portrayed on a flat surface, a paper map or a flat computer screen. Now when you georeference your raster data, you define its location using map coordinates and assign the coordinate system of the data frame. Georeferencing raster data allows it to be viewed, queried, analyzed with other geographic data. Again, the whole power of a GIS. The georeferencing toolbar, as we'll get into in a bit, allows you to georeference raster data sets, raster layers, which may have raster functions, image services, and raster products. So let's get started. For our exercise today, what we're going to use is a historical map from Sanborn. Now Sanborn's a great organization full of smart people and great products and services. You can find out more about Sanborn online. They've got a full suite of geospatial technologies and services to offer. One of the interesting things about Sanborn, as you can find out on their own web pages and also on Wikipedia and in other sources, is that they've been doing this since way back in the 19th century. By doing this, I mean creating maps and also other geospatial products. But one of the things is that for our purposes here, we're going to use some historical maps. And as you can see, they're a highly useful resource in genealogy, urban studies, sociology, land cover change, land use change, and so on. These Sanborn maps, the paper volumes of these, the paper editions, uh, you can also get an access to in the Library of Congress. You can actually go there, and I used to spend some quality hours there when I worked at the U.S. Geological Survey. I highly recommend you go there and check it out. Beautiful, wonderful maps from Sanborn and others, other organizations. As you can see here, fortunately, a lot of these are digitized, scanned, and you can get them in digital form at the Library of Congress. But they've been making maps at Sanborn since 1866, longer than any other company. It's going to be a wonderful resource for our georeferencing activity here today. For the purposes of our demonstration today, we're going to use a Sanborn map for a section of Pennsylvania. Now we're going to go to the Penn State University Libraries site. They've got many of these, actually hundreds of these, scanned and geo-registered already. I am going to, for this activity today, get us access to a Sanborn map from 1922 for a section of State College, Pennsylvania that's actually not geo-registered because again, I want to show you how you can geo-register these. Not just these, but any image that you might have. 
So let's take a look at the Penn State website where I can actually download one of these. So I'm going to download one of these to my own computer and then we're going to georeference it inside ArcMap. Let's take a look just briefly at a couple of things. Note the detail of these. You can see the different buildings. We're going to be able to see how Penn State expanded in the past. Note also that North is not at the top of this map, which will be a great demonstration of the georeferencing capability inside ArcMap. But those are just a couple of things I wanted you to see.